Yeah, hey everybody, it's Brian with you from the Game Cabin, and we are doing our AI-only championship series. We are in round two of the finals, and let's go ahead and get the automation going. And yeah, last episode was an intriguing one. We had Mongolia getting um, double declared on by Korea and Japan, looking as if they were just going to get conquered and knocked out, and they just turned it around and immediately ended up conquering uh, both the capital for, uh, well, actually three different capitals. Conquered Japan's capital, conquered Samaria's capital, even though it flipped back. And then ended up uh, finishing off Greece. So Greece is now eliminated. So Greece isn't going to get full points for this one. Which is kind of unfortunate for her. Uh, what were the eras? Samaria and America were in normal ages. Golden ages for uh, Cree and Mongolia. And Japan's in a heroic age. So not going to be a lot of flipping then. Not really going to be a lot of flipping. Samaria might be the only one that might see some pressure here because of this. Um, but... Uh, is Samaria still at war with U.S.? Was that happening? Yeah, Teddy's still fighting him. I don't really know. Teddy, it looks like he ended up taking over Athens. Athens was Greece, but then Samaria conquered it, and it looks like Teddy just took it back. Okay. Uh, Genghis Khan got to Hue. Oh, that was a quick Hue. Was it? Where's Genghis? Where's your Hue, dude? Oh, it's right there. Uh, not the most helpful Hue. But if he keeps conquering, then it'll be great. <laughs> as long as he keeps conquering, you know, he'll be able to use it. Is Japan at war with anyone? No. Is Mongolia at war with anyone? No. Okay. So the only war right now is between America and Samaria. Samaria is getting musket men up. Um, America only has swordsmen thus far. Um, see, I think I should probably bypass Uruk at this point. I don't know. I think you should go here, conquer this. Although you are going to flip and you will probably flip to America now, especially with Athens there. Um, this is putting America and Mongolia once again right on each other's butts. So we'll see how that shakes out. America is a little weak. Yeah, they don't really have that many troops right now. Just a couple swordsmen, a couple knights. So, right now it looks like Mongolia and Japan might be going for round three. Now, Japan, like, beat them. Beat them back the first time. And honestly, it looked like they might end up conquering them completely. And then somehow Mongolia just freaking pulls the Mongolia. So at this point, Mongolia is definitely worthy of the first place. Like, they had earned the crap out of this. So, yeah, and they're winning by quite a bit. Teddy is still within strike range, two of the top leaderboard. And Teddy might be able to pull out first place here because he's still got a lot of room over here. He's got a lot of room. Did Teddy get a religion? I don't think he did, though. But Mongolia did, right? Nope, Japan, Greece, which is gone, Cree, and Sumeria. What if someone spreads the Greece's religion? Would they get more points? <laughs> Pound maker got the Hagea. Okay. And it looks like he's going to get the potato and the uh, Mont Saint Michel. We did see, well, who was it? Mongolia was building it as well. Someone else was building it here nearby, but I think theirs was further along. Maybe it was Teddy. No, I don't see it over here. No, it's right there. It's right there. Ooh, no, no, no. Mongolia finished it. Or Japan, sorry. Japan. So Japan got that one, but the Potato Palace is still going to be... Um... Actually, that's still got 11 turns. It looks a lot further. At first glance, it looks a lot further than it actually is. Uh, Nippur ended up flipping, and it flipped all the way to J Japan now. So, Mongolia, you got some decisions to make right now, bud. What are you going to do? Colossus got finished by Genghis Khan. Is he going to war? Now, unfortunately... Japan's sitting here with Samurai. So Japan is not going to be a pushover this time. For sure. Japan's looking really strong. In fact, they might have a stronger army than Mongolia. Mongolia is at 603. Korea is actually at 1100. Japan's at 505. So technically, Mongolia does have more. But they would be fighting on the uh, Mongolia home center. All right. Here, this is interesting. With Mongolia capturing Namodal again, I bet this is going to double... Uh, trigger again. I imagine Kree are going to come in again. Kree doesn't have too many good units, though. They're all these ancient old era units, so they're a little behind the tech. Are they going to pop in? Are they going to pop in and try punishing them? Doesn't look like it right now. St. Basil's got built by Japan. Japan's keeping up, dude. They were looking really bad, and now they're keeping things together. Where is the St. Basil's? Where did St. Basil's go? Where did you build your sink? That's not Tundra. All right. Well, I mean, it's 15 points, I guess. So, okay. So no one punished Mongolia. Interesting. I really thought we'd see them punished. Uh, America did get Mycene. 
I know I'm pronouncing it different every single time. It looks like they also pieced out, which is probably, honestly, at this point, best for America because they need to get their troop count up so they can take on Mongolia here in a little while. Kree got the Potato Palace. They finished it. Cool. I'm surprised Kree didn't jump in on this. I'm also surprised why Kree is so far behind in tech right now. He's way back here. He does have musket men. He should have musket men at this point. Maybe he doesn't have niter. Yeah, there's a potential. I mean, it's like any game I play. He probably just didn't end up with niter. He got a bunch of iron, but I don't see niter. Okay. Well, that would be kind of um, awkward then. Yeah, that's definitely going to be a little awkward as the game progresses. I love Samaria just like, give me every pikeman possible. <laughs> we got Mongolia. We're not falling to Mongolia again. Uh, poor Samaria, man. They were doing... Pretty dang good until they got these finals, and they just kind of crapped the bed in the finals. This is second straight round. There's kind of crap in the bed. Same thing with Gorgo. So, if you're cheering for underdogs, I guess at this point you're rooting for Poundmaker. Probably. Or Teddy. But, you know. If you're not American, you probably aren't rooting for America. I can understand that. Great Zimbabwe is being worked on over here by America. America still needs quite a few more cities. I mean, honestly, like, they... One, two, three, four... Like, they could probably get another five, six cities up right now. And that would help them so much. And But they're just not even building settlers. Come on, Teddy. I believe in you. Mongolia is working on the Great Lighthouse. You don't have a lot of sea towels. So where... Where are you working on the Great Lighthouse? Oh, he's got room over here. Olympia. Okay. I was really confused. I'm like, there's no sea tiles over here. So Olympia is going to be an interesting take. If America at some point can fight Mongolia, Mongolia is going to have a really hard time defending this. They only got this little kind of um, um, zone through here that they could uh, potentially defend themselves or they'd have to go all the way around. Like this mountain range is just going to be catastrophic to hold these two towns. So... If America times this right and Mongolia gets distracted with, like, Kyoto, like, for example, if Japan ever takes Kyoto back, like, Mongolia is going to be in a very awkward spot because uh, Shupek, as well, probably is just going to be almost impossible to hold. Um, simply, like, they'll be able to move through Kyoto while they're at war with Japan, but if they're ever at peace, they're going to have a hard time actually getting troops over there. There's, like, only one route there, and so they're going to just have a hard time getting troops over there. And Mausoleum just got completed, so it just might be a very easy take for America at that point. Uh, who built the Mausoleum? I didn't look. Probably Cree, right? Let's just be honest. Probably the Cree. They got the most coast over here as well. Yeah, right there. Uh, that's what we kind of figured. Okay, so great engineers. They're going to be able to get double. So that could be really good because uh, they could get, like, the Space Race one. Except they're behind on tech, so I don't know if they're going for... They might be going for a culture win at this point. Yeah, they're going for a culture win, it looks like. Are they going to be able to? Probably not. Probably not. And, and keep in mind, we're only going to 275, so the game will be over before then. So we'd like to get to about 220 this episode, so we can... Um, we got to finish this up in four episodes. I've timed the episodes out perfectly so that we're done in four episodes. So, <laughs> uh, and, that, and that will lead us right on Wednesday. And I don't know. I might still do that one we talked about without walls. I might look into doing that and just do like three episodes that last day. We'll see. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Drink some coffee, and we're good to go. So, we still have all of these troops right here hanging out near Mongolia. Right near Kyoto. But no one seems to want to push the button yet. Casa got built, and Teddy got the Forbidden City. Who built the Casa? I, I'm, I'm, I'm being dumb here, and I'm clicking it too fast. So, we can probably just scroll through and figure it out. It really isn't that big of a deal. It's only 15 points, but... Um, as I say, you know, as I talk about how important 15 points are all the time. Now, what's interesting with this right here is there's actually a lot of apostles. But I feel like both Mongolia and Japan are too equal in power right now. So neither side really wants to pull the trigger. They're both a little wary because they know that um, they might not be able to win the war. And usually the AI only declares war when they have like a pretty nice advantage. So kind of scrolling through looking for the Casa. Don't really see it. It's going to be next to... Might have been America. Might have been America or Samaria. It's got to be next to a government plaza. Remember that AI is usually pretty um, awkward at building those. So Olympia's flipping. 
And Sparta's flipping. Oh my gosh, guys. Wow. This is big for America. This is gigantic for America. Oh my gosh. Okay, so let's just double check here and see if we see the... Yeah, right there, Casa. Yeah, he got that one or two. So let's look at current point totals. America is currently hovering in third place with 656. Genghis is in first place. Here's the thing. There's two wonders right here. That's 30 points. Uh, and then you're talking all the empire size. You're talking probably 50 to 60 more points here. So this is going to be about a 120 point swing in America's favor if both of these towns flip. So that's going to put uh, Teddy somewhere at like seven, um, um, probably close to 800 at that point. He might even be in first place. Like there's a chance he might be in first place. Genghis Khan is going to then drop to you know basically right around uh, uh, 700 or so. That's a pretty big swing here. This is huge. And once Olympia flips, Sparta's going to flip so much quicker. So America's the only one in the Golden Age. America, you got to like, you got to get this flipped. Like, you got to keep this flipping. Now, there is a potential. There is a very good potential. My boy throws a person or two here and just stops it. Great Zimbabwe got finished as well. Yeah, America's starting to roll with these wonders, dude. America declared war in Samaria. I mean, yeah, I mean, taking Yurik will help as well. Just gotta keep an eye out here. Is America gonna be able to conquer? Maybe Yurik is rolling around with medieval walls. Okay. He does have pike and shoots. Pike and shot. Which are gonna wreck the cav. And the knights. Yeah, it doesn't look like America is gonna be able to win. Uh-uh. Uh, Japan got the killa. Congrats. So they're gonna be able to grab a city-state. <laughs> There's only two city-states that exist. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, AI versus city-states. You know, that might actually be... People keep asking, what's my most um, excited feature in Gathering Storm? It might just be that. So they talked about how the AI is going to put less priority in conquering every city-state in the game in the next update. And, yeah. So I think it's... I think it, like, maybe... I don't know. Maybe, like, uh, I think what it is is certain times, like, certain agendas now just aren't going to touch city-states. Because right now, they just see it as a... Like, I think they see it as an opponent that has very small military, and they're just like, let's go conquer. And so that's why, especially on Deity, when the AI has so much ridiculous might, uh, power on the board, they just go crazy and conquer all the city-states. That, hopefully, is going to be changed. And yeah, hopefully we just see less city-states get conquered. Because it's kind of worthless to play a game with city-states when this is what happens. Like, inevitably, that's what ends up happening most every single game. They'll leave, they only leave city-states in which they want. And honestly, like, Babylon, I wonder if Babylon is Teddy. Influenced by, Teddy does own it. Yeah, if anyone ever took that from Teddy, Teddy might just go end up conquering it before too long. Alright, so, Muskymen over here for Samaria. The Pike and Shot are all gone. There is a potential, then, that they might be able to grab this. We'll see. America's working on Big Ben, Japan's working on Terracotta Army. Um, let's see, Encampment, that's gonna be a nice one. Olympia did flip. Olympia did flip, and so that means, yeah, you're going to flip down eight turns as well. And Olympia should be flipping over to America before too long. And Mongolia is, like I, we talked about before, they're going to have a hard time getting troops over there, so I don't see them taking it back. Yurik is now facing a siege. Um, these guys are all really low, though, so it seems unlikely that that siege is going to maintain. Exactly. Uh, Bombard actually ran away. It looks like they pieced out. Yeah, it looks like they pieced. Yeah, they did. They did, they did, they did. That's okay, though, for America. Oh, you just took two leveled guys and merged them. Because America's about to get two towns. And that, honestly, at the end of the day, is all that matters. This guy is about to get crapped on. Although, bombards aren't too bad. What's the bombard military, uh, melee strength? 50? 43. 43. So, Muskiman's not that much better than it. You know, they'll be able to hold up to it. Olympia does have medieval walls, though. Or, sorry, renaissance walls. Actually, sorry, never mind. They're building the renaissance walls. They still have medieval walls. Sparta's helping out. Oh no, it's full loyalty. But I don't think that holds true. Yeah, I don't know what Mongolia did because he didn't put a governor here. I, I don't understand how the AI does this. Actually, this is only negative 9.8, so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, but once Olympia flips, like there's no way that this city, city gets held on to. And Aksu might also flip at some point as well. I don't know. Because Mongolia's not that large. We'll see. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. America really needs this to flip sooner rather than later. 
Babylon declared war on Japan. Wait, what? Why would Babylon just declare war on Japan? That's why. So, Japan declared war on Samaria. Okay. Okay. We missed that. I missed that. So busy watching that. Okay. Well, uh, is Japan going to be able to do better than America? Well, they have samurai, which are godly. Now, the samurai versus musket men. Musket men have a slight advantage. But the thing is, the fact that the samurai are always going to fight at 48 combat strength is just so good. And also, keep in mind, these are samurai... Um, Mongolia declared war on Japan. Oh, no. Oh, no, Japan. Uh, but they're samurai uh, uh, core right now. So that actually puts them at 58, which uh, puts them on par, actually, with cav. Except these cav cores, because those cav cores are now 72. Those cav cores are nice. Nice, 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 nice. Japan really needs to start getting infantry out. They have musket men. How close are they to infantry? Poundmaker, Genghis Khan. Nah, he's still a ways away. America's probably going to start rolling with infantry here pretty quickly. Pretty quickly. I don't think a Mongolia's going to be able to take anything, because these are all Renaissance walls, and Mongolia doesn't really have any bombards or artillery or anything like that. Um, Nippur is wide open for the taking, though. Um, but that probably honestly just saved Samaria, because they were probably going to end up losing something. And Sparta just now flipped as well. Olympia got conquered by America, full loyalty, and Sparta should flip over to America before too long as well. So, yeah. America just probably is going to be in first place here in just a second. We'll wait for Sparta to flip. And then we'll take a look at the score. How's the religion game going? So, Kree's religion is pretty good right now. They're doing pretty dang good with it. Samaria's religion is not bad. What the hell happened over there? I don't know. Uh, Greece's religion is almost dead. And Japan's still holding on. Still holding on. Looks like Kree's getting the most points out of the religion game, though. Uh, you're still full loyalty. You're not flipping over to America yet. You're probably just going to get conquered by America either way. Uh, the Mongolia-Japanese War, the Third War, uh, isn't really accomplishing a whole lot right now. Are they going for Hami? They got a chance to take Hami. Hami is very undefended right now. It's only 57. So these uh, core uh, cav are just going to wreck it. Are you going to do anything, Kree, or are you just going to sit here and watch the world burn? You're probably going to watch the world burn. Just, okay. Noted. Uh, another couple wonders got finished. Uh, got Oxford by Genghis Khan. Japan got Taj Mahal. And Terracotta got Poundmaker. Okay. Poundmaker now might still be in first place. Even after America ends up with Sparta. Which they will in two turns. Lots of fighting over Tokyo. Lots of fighting over Tokyo. Japan's actually losing Kyoto and Shapurik. Shapurik maybe even quicker now that uh, Sparta has flipped. Okay, let's take a quick look at the score victory. Genghis Khan's still in first place. Dang, dude. All right. Okay, I mean, I guess those wonders. Big man, he just built Big Ben. Yeah, but um, Teddy's right up there, dude. He is right up there. We got a very close game for first place. Now, the downside is, remember, America had a very crappy first game. He ended up losing by a little over 500 points. So what does that mean? Even if he manages to take the lead here... He needs maybe about a 100-point victory and then just hope that Mongolia has a really bad next game. Now, here's the thing. With Shupik flipping in seven turns, I mean, this is what America needs. Unfortunately, Tokyo is about to fall. Yeah, Tokyo just fell. Dang, dude. Japan, I am, in, I am like, shocked. I'm really shocked at how badly Japan's been fighting Mongolia. Mongolia doesn't get any inherent benefits, right? Other than being able to steal cavalry, cavalry, but it's not like he's doing anything. All Mongolian units double the usual combat bonus for having a higher level. Okay, but he does get a higher level. Okay, never mind. Never mind. So he's getting, what, plus uh, six or plus eight then because of that? That's partly why he's doing so good. And then, I mean, these cav armies now are just scary. Now, the question is... If this ends up flipping, it's probably going to go to Samaria. At that point, I'm assuming Samaria declares war, or um, Mongolia declares war on Samaria. Okay, America's trying again. This time they're bringing cav, uh, cav armies. They should be able to grab Uruk at this point then. Yeah, they also have artillery. Yeah, they're going to be fine. Yo, just hit it once and then these walls go bye-bye. Just hit it one time and the walls go bye-bye. 
Uh, Big Ben got built by Genghis. Yeah, see, he's trying to keep his lead uh, any way possible. Right now, building wonders is helping him. With Yurik falling, this is going to give America um, another 15 points for a religion. Or for a wonder. So, I mean, America's trying to get up there, too. Right now, they just need to keep settling cities as well. Like, they need to put a couple more cities up there. They need a couple more cities down here. Maybe even go cap Babylon at some point. He's rolling around with Rough Riders. Yurik did fall. Japan's working on the Hermitage. Japan now has lost. Oh, Tokyo ended up flipping back. Ooh, okay. Okay. That's good. That's good. Now, is Shupik still going to flip to Samaria is the question. Also, is America going to go for Ur? No, they just, wow, they just instantly took bad Tabar. Tabira? <laughs> With their tank? That was just a one turn. God, that was crazy. All right, so Samaria's probably gone here pretty quick then. We're at 20 minutes. Okay, we're at 204, so we're going to be great on timing here. We need to start doing maybe uh, next, next, next manually here pretty quick. We'll see. Genghis got Statue of Liberty. Genghis got Hermitage. Dude, he is just popping out all the wonders right now. But Teddy has taken the lead. Wow. Okay. Wow, wow, wow. It's on the corpse of, you know, two enemies, but America is taking the lead right now. What this is setting us up for is Mongolia versus America. I think especially now that Mongolia has Kyoto, they might end up pushing towards Teddy. And I don't know what that's going to look like. But Teddy's rolling around with tanks. Mongolia's still rolling around with Cav. America's got to be in a better spot at this point. They've got to be at a better spot. And Korea's are still just holding on. All by themselves, just hanging out over there. Uh, Mongolia ended up grabbing the lead again. I think um, uh, Mongolia's got that religion, right? No, they didn't. No, they didn't. So what is Mongolia just staying ahead with? Wonders 165. I mean, honestly, I think it's just that Wonder score right now. Yeah, America's not done. They're going for Ur. It looks like America's just going to wipe off Samaria. Wipe them off the map. There are no more Wonders with Samaria. So he's not going to get any points for that. Now, there was the piece. There was the piece. Teddy, man, you had the opportunity. I think you should have kept going. You should have kept going. Uh, Shupik did end up new flipping as well. Another wonder. Poundmaker got Broadway. Uh, Genghis Khan's still in first. And we'll go for a couple more minutes. Let's get to like 215 or so. Mongolia declared war on America. We said it was coming. We said it was coming. I honestly kind of figured it was going to be America declaring the war, but sure. So, run away. Did his cav get away? His cav army's still there. I don't know if he's going to be able to live here. It, hopefully this guy, the city, kills him <laughs> so that uh, Mongolia doesn't take a cav. Okay, Mongolia, Japan, both got Golden Ages, or Heroic Ages, rather. Uh, normal Ages for everyone else. So, anything else flipping back? No. No, no, no. Woo! Mongolia just brought all the troops forward. Okay. Okay. Teddy... Teddy's bringing out the Rough Riders, man. Teddy's getting the Rough Riders. You know, I don't know much about the Rough Riders. Let's go ahead and go options. Let's go ahead and uh, stop this turn. And we're going to leave this on this wonderful cliffhanger. Woof! Let us go. We got tanks and Rough Riders against Cav Armies. Rough Riders. Yo, in the freaking... Ah! I want to keep watching. I want to keep watching. Okay, we're stopped. Okay, let's look here. Rough Riders. Rough Rider. Uh, so, they get combat plus 10 strength when fighting on hills. They have a lower maintenance cost. Um, they get culture from their kills on their continent. Okay, they're 67 melee strength. Yeah, that's not particularly great. That's not particularly great. What do they even look like? Oh, they are actually horsemen. Oh, so they're like kind of slightly better cav then? Yeah, except these are cav armies, so these are going to be 62, 72, 82? Because 62, right? Yeah. So that's a 72. That's a 72. That's an 82. Now, the tank is 70 or 80? I'm pretty sure the tank is 80 because the infantry is 70. Yeah, the tank is 80. So the cav army is actually stronger than the tank which is a little weird i know now these are at 65 75 correct uh no cannons 65 60 so they're actually at 70 
Okay, what does that mean? What does this all mean? Rough Rider armor here is going to be in a great spot because that's 68, 78, that's 88. That is stronger than anything on the board right now. The regular Rough, uh, uh, rough Riders aren't as good. The artilleries are going to be pretty decent as well. Um, but these cab armies are going to be difficult to take. I think America should be able to survive this war. Um, and what actually makes this interesting, this might open the door to Japan. Tokyo is about to flip back. This might open the door to Japan. Japan's a little behind on tech. That's their biggest issue right now. Mongolia's still at 900. America's only at 700. I mean, honestly, the Korea at some point might just punish Mongolia. Korea's just like, oh, they got infantry, but then they're rolling around with horsemen. But man, and they're even like positioned here. I don't know. We might see Kree punish Mongolia. But I think this is going to set up an interesting last episode. Uh, let's look at score really quickly. Once again, Teddy's in first place by two points. Genghis Khan's two points behind. Poundmaker's only 22 points behind. Freaking close spread. And keep in mind, Japan was in second place last game. So even being 300 points down, I think they still got a shot in the finals. Really, at this point, I think we can talk about Gilgamesh and Samaria probably both being, or sorry, Gilgamesh and Korg. Gorgo being eliminated unless something absolutely ridiculous happens but other than that like this is going to be an exciting uh last um um um, um last couple episodes so I hope you enjoyed it if you did drop a like comment let me know what you think as always hit the subscribe button join the game comment show your support I'll see you guys next time bye everyone